Hello, Byron. How are you? Hi, teacher. I'm fine. And you? I'm doing great. Uh, how did the day? Pretty busy, as always. A lot of activities. Many things to get done in the day, but it's okay. We have a lot of activities. At least tomorrow, <laughs> we have... No, uh, tomorrow's Friday, so we don't have class at night, so we have a little oh, bit. Yes, yes more relaxed. <laughs> mm -hmm. I have all, uh, I have some homework for the university too, and the presentation of today. <laughs> yes, but I, I, I feel prepared for this activity. Imagine, Byron, already today, finish one week, 25 percent Yes. 25% of the course completed. Yes, it's one with now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super Faster. fast. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, so much. Thank you so much for joining us and being here on time. Um, we're just going to do, before we get to our presentations, we want to make sure that it, uh, we have an idea of what we were talking about yesterday about the adverbs just to help us review. Here is a short video. Hi, this time we'll talk about some adverbs which are often used in storytelling to emphasize that something interesting is about to happen. Which of these adverbs are positive, which are negative, and which ones are neutral? Coincidentally, fortunately, luckily, miraculously, sadly, strangely, suddenly, surprisingly unexpectedly, unfortunately. Okay. First, do you know what all of those mean? It's okay, all of these adverbs? What is the meaning of coincidentally? It's like by accident. It's a coincidence, it's by accident. Oh, so, okay. Mm -hmm. So for example, you go to a party and your ex-girlfriend is in the same party. Ooh, it's coincidentally. Ah, uh, it is a coincidentally, um, okay. Mm -hmm. I got it. Okay. Any other words? Okay. Now that you have listened and decided which ones were positive, negative, and neutral, we want you to complete the following statements with those adverbs so you can come up with creative sentences. Okay. So instead of creating the sentences, as we know today, we're telling a story. And that's the main idea. So today we're going to be taking a little bit of our story, which is our first activity. Okay. Who has the first story to tell? Who's going to be the first one to share their ideas? Hello. Hey. Yes, go ahead, Os. Omar? Um, I will be the second. I don't know if somebody say hello. I heard, but no, it's you, Omar. Okay. Okay, right. I'm going. Okay, uh, my story is about the three little pig. Let me introduce you. Here's the little pig. This is the second. This is the third little pig. So I'm going to start. Uh, there were three little pigs. Uh, they live in a small house with their mom. So one day the mom sent them to build her, uh, his own house. So the, while they are walking on the road, the first little pig met a farmer. The farmer was with a lot of straw. So the first little pig asked him if he could have some straw to build his own house. The farmer was agreed. So the first uh, little pig began to build his own house. The second little pig uh, uh, met um, a woodcutter. The woodcutter was carrying a lot of stick. 
So the second little pig asked him if he could have some stick to build his own house. So uh, the, the woodcutter was agree. So the second little pig uh, began to uh, build his own house. And the third little pig, while he was walking on the road, uh, he met the, um, a builder. The builder has a lot of bricks. So the, the third little pig thought he could uh, build a strong house with these bricks. So he could to the builder man if he could have some bricks to build his own house. So the builder man was agree and the little pig began to build his own house. But one day a wolf uh, suddenly appeared in the first little, uh, little pig house, the strong house and knocked the door. And the wolf say, little pig, little pig, let me come in. So the little pig answered, I will not let you in. So the wolf blew the house and gets down. So the first little pig ran away to the second house, to the wood house. But soon the wolf uh, was on the second uh, house and knocked at the door and say, little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. So they answered we will not let you in. So the wolf blew the house and gets down too. So the two little pigs ran away as fast as he could uh, for the bricks house. But soon the wolf uh, was in the, the third house and blew the house. But the house was stronger and the wolf he couldn't get down. So the wolf was very angry, but he got away from this house and never, and he was never seen again. That's it. All right, very nice, Omar, very nice. Great job, um, excellent, excellent flow. Only a little bit of the Spanglish in your mind. In English is not, I was agree, he was agree. In English is no was, only he agreed or he didn't agree. Ah, okay. But great job, excellent. Okay. Thank you. Excellent, Omar. Who's the next? Who's the next? Uh -huh, Omar? Okay. The next uh, one is um, Rudy Romero. Rudy. All right. Let's do it. Rudy Romero. Okay. Perfect. Just give me one second. I turn on my camera. Okay. Okay, today I'm gonna tell you a little bit of the legend of the Cadejo. Cadejo is a common name. Uh, I can uh, translate in, a, in another language because it's a local name. So the legend of the Cadejo tells the existence of an animal or a kind of animal that comes out at night to work and or torment people uh, who stay late or get drunk while traveling in lonely places. Um, it is generally considered as a protective spirit, the other Cadejo. Uh, the legendary being is described like a kind of a dog, um, very large. Um, he has huge claws. Uh, usually the people who have seen is says that he has glowing eyes in the darkness uh, has changed uh, because of its sound. Uh, when the Cadejo ya walks, uh, he drags the chains. Um, it was created um, according to the legend of the Mayans, uh, a kind of Nahual. I don't know if you hadn't uh, ever listened of what is a Nahual, but the Nahuales had the ability to transform into an animal, such like a bird and jaguars and snakes. And in this case, like a dog, um, it, it, a black dog or a white dog. And I searched in the uh, Rai dictionary and he says uh, that it's a mythical animal uh, with appearance of a woolly dog. Um, with the blink lights and very, that's all. very nice Rudy very nice great idea adding a little bit of 
culture into your presentation. Very good explanation as well as the story. Great. Who's next, Rudy? I think it's um, my partner, Carla. I don't know if she is here. Carla Al Alvere Alverge. Yes, I'm here. But Carla, you are sick, right? Yeah, teacher, but uh, if you, <laughs> I don't know, I tried, maybe. It's your decision, Carla. If you're sick, it's your decision. Um, I don't prepare, but I don't know. Maybe I try. Okay, Carla, go ahead and try. Okay. Uh, um, sorry. Uh, I talk about the uh, Siwanaba. And the Siwanaba is a Salvadorian mythologic um, character that um, chose to uh, herself in a phantom female and um, in beautiful body. Um, I don't remember, teacher, sorry. Okay, Carla, no problem. I know you're sick. I know you went to the doctor. I hope you feel better. Sorry. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. We'll try. You present on Monday, Carla. Relax. All right. Who's next, Carla? Select the next person. Uh, sorry. Uh, maybe um, Mario. Mario. Okay. Okay. Good evening, everyone. Uh, today I'm going to speak about the Cuscachapa Lagoons, or in Spanish, Laguna de Cuscachapa. Uh, Cuscachapa Lagoons is located in Santa Ana, in the Chalchapa City. It's a, a small lagoon, but many people in Chalchuapa uh, knows the, the legend because it's something special. Because my grandmother and my grandfather, they told me when I was a child that the lagoon, uh, it, it was located in other place in Chalchuapa, but the lagoon one day, normally, uh, when, when she was a child, every day they run away to go to swim in the lagoon in the, in the morning. But one day, like every day, they going to swim at the lagoon, but the lagoon disappears. And yo, they just watching a hole, a big hole in, in the earth. So they start to asking what happened. Maybe uh, the, the lagoon disappeared because, because she was a child and his and her friends uh, was a, a child, a kid. They, they was thinking about someone uh, stolen the water. But the next day, one person arrived to her house and started to talk about the Cuscachapas Lagoon. And they told, they told him to the family that the lagoon is in other place, but maybe in the night, the lagoon appears in other place. So it's uh, all the people, uh, the older people talk about the same thing, that the lagoon move to other place um, every 75 years because my grandmother told me that the, her grandmother told him 
that that lagoon was located in other place. So the legend is the or in other way, the people says that a big serpent live in the in the bottom of the lagoon. And when the big serpent or the big the biggest snake uh, awake or wake up, uh, she moved her house to the other place. So the house is the lagoon. That is the legend. Wow, I had never heard that legend before. I didn't know it. Thank you very much. Um, your grandmother told you this story, Mario. Sorry, teacher. I can hear you. I I, I have some issues with my internet. It, did your grandmother tell you this story? I can hear you, teacher. Uh, I have issues with my internet. Can you repeat? It's okay. It, the story is from your grandmother. Yes, she told me the 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 history. I was uh, visiting the Cuscachapa Lagoons in 20 years ago. And I, I know the, the lagoon uh, that is located right now, but I also, I visited the, the other place when the lagoon was localized before. Uh, before the the move okay all right very interesting mario very interesting all right who's next mario maybe i don't know let me see yancy yancy all right good evening everyone well i couldn't finish the class yesterday and i didn't have a storytelling, but I choose one. I don't know if it's okay. The Little Red Riding Hood. And, um, well, I'm not good enough with this, but I will try. <laughs> okay. Uh, this is uh, once upon a time, there was a little girl, uh, Little Red Riding Hood. Um, one day she was talking with her mother and she said to her that go and see your grandmother uh, because she has been ill. So the, the little red riding hood um, goes suddenly to her mother house, grandmother house, um, and a wolf appeared uh, suddenly in the, in through the wood and the, this wolf tried to, to know and ask to the girl what is the what was the destination? And she told him the destination. That was the the grandmother house, and when the wolf went uh, went out fastly to the destination that has the little red riding hood, and that was the grandmother house. When he went into the house, and the wolf ate the grandmother and was waiting to the little red riding hood uh, arrived to the house. And when the, this little girl arrived to the house, uh, she started notice that your grandmother um, was a little bit different. And she quit, I mean, she, uh, I, I forgot the word. <laughs> She slowly started um, looking at the appearance of your grandmother. Uh, she noticed that was the wolf. And fortunately, the, a hunter 
uh, heard or recognized the wolf well he ran uh, quickly to inside the house and tried to help the little red riding hood and finally she was safe all right thank you very much Nancy. <laughs> great job only you have to be careful with your pronouns a lot of times you were taking mm -hmm. my grandmother but no mine is her no your her grandmother okay this great great Nancy. who's next Nancy? good job oh let me see i don't know if person person all right let's do it person mm -hmm. Hey, Herson. Uh, I'm okay. sorry. Uh, I was thinking about some of the myths because I didn't have time, but I was trying to make something there. Okay, go ahead, Herson. Tell us. Uh, uh, um, Uh, uh, un, un de, de, no de problem. It's okay, Harrison. Okay. okay, don't worry, don't worry. Select the next Harrison. Who is next? And then we come back to you. Who's next, Harrison? Yes, her son. You got to speak in English, her son. Because you don't speak English, that's why it's difficult. Go ahead. Select the person. Select the person. New teacher. Mario. Mario already passed. It's Sullivan. Sullivan. Okay. Sullivan. Hi everyone. How are you doing? How are you doing? All right, Sullivan. It's... Okay. My story today is uh, the shepherd boy and the wolf. Okay. Once upon a time, um, there was the there was live a uh, shepherd boy who cares the shepherd of the village. Um, every day he used to take her, uh, the the ship to the top of the hill and bring it down up, at the evening. But one day he one day he feels um, so bored. He decided to make a um, a joke to everyone. So he decided to 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 scream aloud and said, "The wolf! The wolf! Help me! Help me!" And all the village heard, all the neighbor are and hear the boy scream out. So he go, they they go to to help him, and all the village came to the top of the hill to save the chipper. And and when they came to the spot, um, they didn't notice uh, any sign of wolf. So the village uh, asked the boy. Where is the wolf? So he laughed very loud and he said, "Is it was a joke? It was a joke," and he started to laugh. And he did the same thing on the next day and the next day. So the people know he's lying right now. So when the situation came, when the really wolf came. Uh, he start to scream, the wolf, the real wolf, help me, help me. But no one's go to help him. Uh, so the wolf really ate some sheep and he ate the arms to the chipper. So at the last, the boy understood his mistake, left uh, a big, a big, big um, 
moral uh, lecture and the the jokes can be uh not a good uh, ideas for to to be uh, to 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 make liars to the other people so that is my 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 story teacher all right Suleiman, thank you very much good job good idea I, it's nice to hear the story all right who's the next one that's Suleiman. uh let's see eduardo you're eduardo the one who it is okay Hello everyone. Well, uh, my uh, story is um, about El Cipitillo. El Cipitillo is a song of uh, La Ciguanaba. And when his mother was a uh, corset to the eternity, uh, he was corset too. He was corset by uh, his grandfather, Realoc, uh, to remain as a child for forever. So um, he, uh, his appearance is uh, like a, a small child, uh, about uh, eight to 10 years. And um, he used to uh, wear a huge uh, hat. And also um, his feet um, used to be in a back position. And for that reason, it is uh, impossible to, to track him. Also, uh, he loves to wa uh, wallop on ashes and eat too. So um, he, uh, he liked to hide in beside to the rivers and wait for uh, young ladies. Sometimes uh, he throw flowers in a small stone. And then, and I remember some years ago, uh, we have um, a series in our country. Uh, I remember that Channel uh, 10 uh, has a, had that, uh, that series. And we can uh, watch that series in LCPTO. Uh, used to use uh, her ashes, her ashes, sorry, to uh, disappear and appear to another place. And also he has um, an enemy uh, who um, always uh, been, I don't know, fighting, fighting. Uh, and that's it. Uh, this history is, is uh, of our country. And also said that uh, El Cipitillo can uh, appear, just can appear for child, not for adults. And that's the story. All right, very good. Very nice, Eduardo. A little confusing with the pronoun. Uh, sometimes you said her, it's his, but very good job, very nice. Who's next, Eduardo? Uh, Laura. Laura, all right, let's do it, Laura. Okay. I think I can turn up my, my camera. Uh, can I go ahead without my camera or can I? Okay, yeah. is something wrong with your camera? Uh, uh, can I try to, to enjoy the meeting one more time? Go ahead, try try to do it, Laura. Try to do it without the camera. It sounds like you're- Yes, I- mm -hmm. uh, I- Oh. T-shirt, sorry, I think that Laura had, had some 
problem with her oh. internet. Yes. Laura. If you want. Laura. I'll put, okay. I think Laura, she was disconnected. All right. Byron, can you go ahead and present? Yes, no problem. Okay. Let thanks, me Byron. activate my camera. Okay. Can you see me? Yes. Yes, Byron. Okay. Hi, guys. I will talk to you about the white women. Uh, this history is a uh, is very old. Uh, this uh, legend is it was not created in El Salvador, but some people uh, told us about this white woman, right? Uh, the white woman, uh, she always wears all white. Uh, she has a long hair, black hair. And as per the information that I search, uh, I know that this woman always have the same pattern all the nights. And she appears always uh, before, no, after the midnight, sorry. She always, eat, she always uh, is screaming for her children. Any, anybody or no, somebody, sorry, anybody knows why she's uh, screaming or for who is screaming. Uh, what else? Uh, some people uh, have some videos of this woman uh, when she walked uh, in the streets, for example, or only the screams that her is always served for the children, right? Um yes, I I investigated that this uh, legend was originated in France, but the spectrum <laughs> appears in El Salvador is is really <laughs> is really crazy. But um, yes, that's all I think. In France, yes, was created in France. This legend. It was about uh, a girl or uh, that she lost uh, her children. Or some people in France says that this story is about a, a problems with the love of this her of of this girl. Sorry. Okay, thank she you. Had very some, much. Yes, that's all. Okay, okay, interesting. Very interesting. I didn't know. I thought it was a Salvadorian one. Mm -hmm. Yes, but, but was created in France. <laughs> okay. All right, Byron. Thank you so much. All right. No Who's next, Byron? Who's next? Christian. Christian. All right. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, Christian, we can hear you. I'll go first. Uh, I'm not going to use the camera because I'm from a desktop PC, so it doesn't have a... Okay, okay, Christian, but no reading, right, Christian? Nah, no problem. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, I'm going to talk about the... I don't know if it's, if it's correct, the traduction, but it's a uh, father without head. Okay. Um, The story told tells that it was a father from the church that was um, that was decapitated by the by the local local government of uh, years ago. I don't know which is the correct date from the story. Maybe a uh, one and not. I don't know what is the the exact year, but. The story tells that the father was killed by the local government, and since he was killed, the his soul still in this world. And uh, after midnight, or since midnight, the father uh, walks out from uh, multiple churches and walk with a ro rosary, rosary on his hands. 
Uh, so you can see the father walks out the church and obviously without the, the head. So it's his soul that is still living in her. And yeah, it's like um, tradition, you know, like a Salvadoran story. I think that is that has a, a few versions, but this is the one that I remember that was killed uh, just for the government. Okay, <laughs> I, I have to say, I never heard this story, but okay, all right. Is the, the father without a head, all right, interesting. Okay. okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Christian, appreciate that. All right, so who's next? We have Suyapa and Laura. Laura, do you wanna try one more time? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to talk about uh, beauty and the best uh, story. Uh, there was a pretty town where lived a beautiful girl with her, with her father. Uh, one day, her father went to the forest, but he never came back to the town. So uh, the beauty got worried because uh, she didn't know anything about her father. Uh, she decided to look for him and went to the forest uh, and she saw a big and a scary castle. She decided into the castle and she noticed that her father was kidnapped by a beast. Uh, she asked to the beast to take her father's uh, place uh, for her freedom. The, the, um, the beast accepted and while she was, while she was kidnapped, uh, she, tried, she tried to run away from her, from the castle, but it was not possible because uh, the forest was dangerous and, and, she, and she couldn't get uh, anything for her freedom. So uh, the beast was, uh, the beast was a man that was trapped by the spell, and the spell uh, could be broke uh, with a uh, through kid's love. So the beast uh, tried to invite the beauty to dinner together, and one day she accepted. Um, uh, while the time passed, uh, they shared. Uh, some moments and they felt each other. So at the end, um, the beauty kissed to the best and they live happy together forever. <laughs> That's the story. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you, Laura. Nice job. All okay. right. I'm glad you fixed the, a little bit of the internet problem. Good. All right. So we have Suyapa. So, Yapa, you ready? Yes, hello. Hello. Uh, my history is about a small boy. Okay. Uh, once upon a time in the palace, the queen saw a snow falling. And she said, if I have a girl, the name well, the name's um, be a snow wife. And two years later, uh, the queen died, and now the snow wife have a step has a step mother. Um, <coughs> sorry, the step mother was a bad person because the um, was invited. She answered it to the mirror, 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 who is the most beautiful woman in the region. Miro answered it. You are beautiful woman, but the Snow White is the most beautiful in the region. Because, uh, because um, the state mother uh, for this um, case, the, the state mother 
was invited. After time, uh, she said to, to, to the hunter, go to the forest with a uh, snow white and kill to her. And the snow white walk and walk for a lot of time until to arrive the seven square. And when the seven square to, to arrive at home, and they saw a, a girl. And the seven square say, say to, to her, no problem, you stay at home, but uh, you, you can clean the house, prepare the food and other activities. After that, the stepmother asked the new, uh, the new to Miro, 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 who is the most beautiful woman in the region? And the Miro answered, it, you are beautiful, but the Snow White is the mo most beautiful uh, girl in this region. In this moment, uh, the stepmother was angry because the hunter the complete the order. After the stepmother preparing a plan, but she uh, make a uh, apple with a poison apple and visited to the um, is not white in at home and the stepmother say you can eat the apple and in this moment that is not white diet when the seven square arrived to arrived, arrived to at home after work saw a snow white diet and they put in glass box to a snow white after time the a princess visited this region and he saw uh, a snow white in in the box and he in love in in love to snow white it's not right. Uh, in this moment, in this moment, he he's to Snow White, and after they got married and they live uh, happy forever. That's that's it. Hey, so Yapa, very nice, great job. A little bit of the words for the pronunciation, um, but very good effort, very good. The pronunciation is. Dwarves, seven dwarves. Oh, uh, okay. But very nice. Good job. All right. We now, the last one, the most amazing. Herson, are you ready? Ready. Herson, Herson. Let's do it, Herson. My story is La Corona. It's a special of. Of Spanish America, originally from the from Spanish world. Okay, to to our tradition is the show. Herson, are you reading? It looks like you are reading. Reading teacher. Uh, my story is La Llorona. La Llorona, okay. So look at the camera and tell me. Okay. Don't, don't read it, don't read it. Look at the camera and tell me, Harrison. Tell me about La Llorona. It's a spread of Spanish uh, America. It's for a tradition, uh, a uh, tradition a uh, warma is a children uh, 
uh, in when in the show in of a one a one of her children for the at night a throws a private so um Kitty scary to go the or I'm sorry to uh, yeah. let's go. Okay, Harrison, don't worry, Harrison. It's important you practice more speaking. Only reading is not good for you. You're not going to be able to communicate with the people. With the people, you, you have to practice speaking, record audios, speak to others, things like this. Okay, Harrison? Hey, Harrison? Okay, teacher. All right, great. Guys, excellent job. Great. Thank you for everyone for doing the homework and being responsible. Congratulations. It's very important because this develops your ability to speak naturally because this is not a typical thing. You have to speak and improve your fluency. Very good job. Excellent. So congratulations. Now we're going to continue with our platform. Okay. Platform. But before we go to the platform of 2.6, we're going to have five minutes with our partners and we're going to say which story did you like and why. Look at all of the partners. Ah. For example, I like the Siguanava because, or I like uh, the Lago, the one about the lake, because I didn't know the story, okay? You're going to have just a few minutes with your partners. Which story did you like and why? Harrison, you okay?
Okay, we're ready? Yes. All right, good, good. I hope that you paid attention. You learned a little bit from the other stories, maybe some new vocabulary you didn't know, but that's the important. Now we're going to continue on with our topic. We're going to watch a video, 2.6. Um, but it's for the objective. So first, okay, right here. Christian, can you please read what is today's lesson objective? Sure. In this class, participants will listen and practice a conversation where people are catching up on news, paying attention to use the present perfect continuous in context. All right. So here we're listening to the news, right? So what have you been doing? Okay. Let's find out on this conversation. This time, we want you to listen to the following conversation. The idea is for you to understand what's going on and also to practice it with a friend or a relative. Once you do that, we want you to play the second part of the conversation and get ready to answer the question I have for you. What have you been doing? Part A. Listen and practice. Hey, Gina. I haven't seen you in ages. What have you been doing lately? Nothing exciting. I've been working two jobs for the last six months. How come? I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Well, that's exciting. Yeah, it is. What about you? Well, I've only been spending money. I'm pursuing a full-time modeling career. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. All right, before we listen to the part two, let's take a look at part one. Uh, any words you don't know? Anything you're not sure about? The pronunciation? Uh, what does how can means? Uh, repeat it one more time. What does how come means? How come is the, another way to say why? It's more informal, right? Correct. So I've been working two jobs for the last six months. Why? Oh, I'm saving up money for a trip to Morocco. Oh, the same. How come? Okay. It's like a, maybe can be like a como así in Spanish. <laughs> um, a little bit like that, but not exactly. But yes, more or less. Mm -hmm. I know. Okay. And what is the meaning of pursuing? Pursuing. Oh, okay. Pursuing. Correct. Oh. I've been pursuing, pursuing okay. a modeling career, right? Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is the meaning? I'm sorry. Pursuing means that you are trying to do. Ah, oh, okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. This is pursuing. Any other words? Not for now. Okay, let's listen to the rest of the conversation. Really? How long have you been modeling? Since I graduated, but I haven't been getting any work. I need a job soon. I'm almost out of money. What has happened to Pete and Gina since they last saw each other? Please write your answer on our discussion box. Part B. Listen to two other people at the party. What has happened since they last saw each other? Bob, how's it going? Pretty good, thanks. I haven't seen you for a while. What have you been up to? Well, I've been looking for a house to buy. I finally found one last month. That's terrific. Yeah, I'm really tired of renting. So what have you been doing lately? Well, I just got back from a vacation in Italy. Italy? Where in Italy? Mostly in the north, around Milan. I have a cousin there. I see. Did you have a good time? Yeah, it was great. In fact, I just got engaged to a guy I met there. You're kidding. Well, that must have been some vacation. Okay, so what happened in second conversation? The girl got engaged with a man. Okay. Uh, yeah. She she was on vacation 
in Italy, north of Italy. Great. So she met him in the north of Italy. Excellent. All right. So pretty easy, right? Simply, what were they doing? Oh, she was vacationing. Uh, he was pursuing. All of these are ideas of what the people are doing. I've been working two jobs. I'm saving up money. These are all of the things that we're looking at. So right now, we're not going to go to the next one, but we are going to tell our partners, what have you been doing? Today is six months. Imagine today begin the six months of the year. Today, what have you been doing all year? January, February, March, April, May. <gasps> tell me, what have you been doing? Working teacher. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Sullivan, tell me. Working teacher. <laughs> just working. working. <laughs> just working, just working, good. Yeah. To make the correct sentence in the grammar is, I have been, and then you're going to use the verb with ing, okay? I have been working, it's like that. Exactly, that is the correct way. This oh. tells us the time, it says that you started and continue I have been. to now. Okay, okay, thank you so much. You're welcome, you're welcome, Sullivan. Who else, who else? What have you been doing since January? I have been learning to play piano. Wow, Yancy, congratulations. Is easy or difficult? Um, so-so. Mm, <laughs> no practice, huh? All right. Okay. <laughs> uh -huh. It depends. It depends. Okay, okay. How about how many practice? Ah, I understand. Okay. Who else? Who else? What have you been doing? Don't be scared, guys. You've been doing a lot of things in your life. Maybe I have been going to the gym. Maybe I have been learning English. I don't know. Mm -hmm. What have you been doing? Really, what I, have you been oh, Go ahead, Laura. Laura, tell me. I have been trying to speak in English, maybe. Good. All right. But not trying, Laura. I have been speaking in English. You, you're doing it. Okay. Mario, what about you? What have you been doing? I have been playing video games today. Okay. All right. Pretty good. This is the idea. This grammar is called the present perfect continuous. And this is specifically, we use it to indicate something started in the past and continues to now. On Monday, we're going to continue practicing more on how to use it correctly. But thank you very much. Please remember to complete the platform to 2.7, which is today. On Monday, we're going to finish unit two and probably begin unit three. Any questions before you go home? Uh, I have a question about the platform. Yes, Christian. Uh, I cannot watch the videos, so I don't have the check mark on those. Is there any problem about that? Not with the videos, because the grade comes from the little notebook. But you should try a different browser. Sometimes it's for Google, or sometimes it's for, um, I don't know, a, uh, another browser. I, it's, so far. Mm -hmm. Sorry, it's possible to watch them on, on a cell phone? Because I think that I cannot watch them through the through the PC because this is the 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 work one, so uh, it's really it's blocked from there. It's really mm -hmm. limited. Yes, yes, you can watch from the cell phone, no problem, Christian. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions? No, teacher. No, it's clear. Teacher. All right. Thank you so much for connecting. We finished the first week. Have a nice weekend. I see you on Monday. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice Bye. 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 Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night.